It's a smart camera. It moves around to wherever it hears sound. <clears throat> yeah, well, smart. <laughs> I got to Dunkin' Donuts and I was like, we didn't make sure the microphone worked. <laughs> oh, well, we got it. We're on. So we can let Betty. Betty's, Betty's been a little Betty, bit can you hear us? No, you have to, she's in the way here. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, so just go up. So hover over her and then click admit. But I want to make sure that they can hear <coughs> Um, no, I So Betty's going to be with us too. Yeah. Okay. And um, Sarah Nelson was going to join us, supposed to, as our uh, Board of Finance uh, liaison. Mm -hmm. She didn't come to the last meeting, but they are the ones that requested the Zoom, so we're hoping that she would join us. Okay. Oh, they're there. That's me. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Can you hear us? Betty? Yep. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. We're testing sound to see if you can hear us. It's good. I can. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. Thank Sorry. You. I just want to make sure you were good. Yeah. We yeah. appreciate your going back. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Well, now that we're all electric set up here, let's uh, bring the meeting to order. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, so I have Betty, do you have the um, minutes and the new agenda? Yes, I do. No, you already have a second. Mm -hmm. I'll take the agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, approval of minutes. Um, Anybody have a question? I didn't. I typed them. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I read these before it came. Good. Okay. That uh, if all those make a motion to, a motion to uh, yes, please make a motion to accept the minute. Make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Okay. Minutes accepted. Can I have a question? Do we have a quorum requirements? Yes. We have what you say. I think with, yeah, four. four. So there's five of us. All right. Okay. All right. Um, there's, no, there's no one from the public attending. Going from the public here, so I think public comments can be that's it. A couple more comments. comments there. Um, I think I have a pretty straightforward agenda for tonight. Okay. After this, um, uh, you know, we've everybody had been asked to do a little bit of research on different things and report back to the committee. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, it was to find out several of us uh, what other towns were doing in the neighborhood and surrounding towns and cities. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, John did some work regarding additional views or some other ways of looking at revenue. So, 
All right, so right. I took uh, the liberty of taking the last half of about, I don't know, 17, 18, 20, 20 some towns. Um, and in the interesting part of it was there are so many like subdivisions or subcategories of, of you know, Stonington. Um, I think that we have the same, but there are either, either Stonington is in, Mystic is in there, and it's part of the West. So I didn't reach everybody because some of us had some of those on um, our list. So what I did was um, the first one I went to was Voluntown. Voluntown does exactly the same thing that we do, and they do no additional uh, services to the to the seniors. Um, Waterford follows the same um, the same state 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 option. However. What they did is uh, local option is once they meet the criteria that is set by the state, they automatically get an additional $225 flat and that's it. So they don't make any, that's the, that's the only thing that they do. Tony, is that for the elderly and disabled that they, that category? I'm sorry? The 225 extra, is that under the uh, additional elderly and disabled, that category? Is that where they get, do that? Yes, it's for um, and it's for both homeowners and the totally disabled. Um, and they did not the veterans get a whole different um, ca uh, category of benefit. And they have a uh, and I'll make copies of these for everybody. But they have on a veterans that the single person is sixty five thousand three hundred and married is seventy four thousand one hundred. So I think. I don't know what the option is for the veterans. I don't know if it's like thousand dollars or a percentage, but that's what I got for local vet veterans. And we can we can look up what that is. Um, Town of Stonington. They said only homeowners are eligible under the state. Um, veterans they get a standard exemption. Um, however, they are currently going into a reassessment, and if they're you know, hypothetically, if their reassessment were to double, then their benefit doubles. So whatever oh, they, it's tied to that. It's tied, theirs is tied to the reassessment at the moment. So because mm. they haven't had one, I think maybe in five years. They just had one, didn't they? Um, so just had they probably just didn't know that. Yeah, and it was really hot. Yeah, and like yeah. ours was last year, right? And we have done it 10 years from the first day. Right. Yeah. So, um, one second. Quick the other one that I did find interesting was Montville. But actually, Montville, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Montville follows the same, and they don't have any additional um, compensation as well. The one that is interesting is Salem. And now Salem does what they call a senior tax exemption, so they call it STEP. And when I read this, they have um, the the senior has to be a resident of town for ten years before they can get this step. And when they get to that step, the the increase is sixty one thousand dollars, who is not the head of household, and seventy six thousand, who is the head of household for those who are single, and ninety two. So any where there's where there's a threshold, this would go in later, but they have to be at least a 10 year resident. So they've taken it one, excuse the expression, step further. So that's what I've come up with. That's relatively new. Um, no, they did that start. We'll see. Um, I put this that said something in here about. <laughs> Use it also, they use the circuit breaker and it started in 2019. Mm -hmm. It said for, for, for year 2021, STEP will be available to seniors who apply for and receive the circuit breaker tax credit on their 2019 taxes. Mm -hmm. So I am going to make a copy of these, you know, just for everybody. And so that's what I came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, did you I did, and um, it's interesting because on module I had that they had additional exemption for low-income veterans, and right on their website it, it's, it's identified as a local option for additional exemption for low-income veterans. Um, uh, excuse me. 
the um, do one room has an additional veterans exemption and a handicapped uh, equipped vehicle in exemption. I have Franklin. Now this gets a little confusing to me because when you go into the town's website and then talk to the assessor, you have the different levels of options of tax relief that, relief that they have. And um, according to the this document here, which you gave us at the last meeting, the local option property relief in here are listed the various types of uh, tax relief the towns can get. And my understanding is that some of those um, are like they're in tears from what I understand from what uh, uh, Daryl told me, that the town can give some of these reliefs, that the state can give some of these reliefs, and then the town has the option under those reliefs to add additional ones. For example, I looked at Norwich and they had an additional elderly and disabled uh, uh, abatement. And that the state, I guess, gives that, but then town, the Norwich gave an extra $200 to anybody who qualified for that. That was something they did as, as a local option. They also give an exemption for gold star parents and spouses. If you've lost a loved one in, in war, as the parent or the spouse, you get uh, an exemption. A lot of towns don't do that. Um, looking at Franklin, they, he told me, the assessor told me, they gave an elderly and disabled homeowners uh, break, an additional veterans exemption, an additional veterans 100% disability exemption, a handicapped equipment vehicle exemption, and relief for their firefighters and emergency personnel. Um, old Lyme, the woman said to me right up front, she goes, we give no optional uh, town relief. But yet on the matrix that we got from Daryl, it showed that they gave uh, exemption to the veterans, the additional exemption to the veterans, relief for firefighters, and also an affordable housing deed restriction break. And Preston gives an, exemption, an additional exemption for low income veterans. So when you look at what they have there, some of them mix in what's available from the state which we could uh, key into on a, a different tier under those exemptions, or they have ones that are strictly local options. The, the sites will, in some instances, actually call out and say local, you know, local exemption that they're doing. So it got a little strange. It was a little mixed how they did things, but that I think can be sorted through easily enough. Um, the one thing I was interested in is we're looking at New London County. And of course, while we all share this little section of Connecticut, no towns are created equal. So I was looking to see, well, what towns are like us, around us? And so I went to the old ERG, if you remember that, the educational district um, grouping that they used to have, and it's now called a DERG, it's a district reference group. And it runs from A to I, with A being Darien and, and the people down on the, down the Gold Coast, to I, which is, New London, New Haven, Bridgeport, all your big major cities, Hartford. So we fall in group E in this, uh, this is a uh, demographic grouping of like towns based on socioeconomic features. And in our London County, the other towns in our ERG, our DERG, I should say, are Basra, Franklin, Lebanon, Lisbon, and Preston. I will provide you with all this. I have copies of all this. I will provide you with that. And I thought it'd be interesting that we hone in on those communities because they're obviously in our county and they're very similar to us in their socioeconomic demographic makeup. So what do they give to their citizens, uh, their residents as tax relief? And I thought we'd look at what they offer and that would be a good guide for us as to what possibly we could be offering. But I think it's interesting to do what Connie is saying. Let's look at the, the overall county of New London. But I, I think we want to focus on those other five towns as being similar to us. Mm -hmm. That's good. Wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Thank you. Now, you know, Ryan couldn't be here tonight, and he did supply me with some information. Uh, that I will make available to Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm just going to read what he presented here. Okay. He's got it listed by town and what the town offers. So we have the town of Spray, which includes Baltic, Hanover, and Versailles. Is that his name? Versailles? 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 Versailles. How long have you been here? I don't use the French pronunciation. <laughs> um, so they offer the state relief, no local program. Griswold, which includes Jewett City. Um, you sent an email, but they didn't respond. So we'll have to get back from them. Legend. Including Dale's Ferry, the state program, plus a credit, doesn't say how much. <clears throat> and they apparently still have people on the freeze program. The freeze program is something that went into that was stopped a few years ago. But some towns still have people on that program. So what you're saying then, if some if they froze the program, nobody gets it anymore, yeah. or they get yeah. what what they would have gotten at that time. Okay. They grandfathered in, yeah. So the program remains. Dollar amount, I believe, is set. Okay. But nobody else can move to the program. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> in Colchester, the state program plus on the local level, the town level, local sixty-five and older disability. Uh, someone's totally disabled. <clears throat> totally or permanently disabled. Uh, they need to be a one year resident. Um, I'm trying to make up these. Yeah. Uh, 43 with an income. Single. Oh, maybe it's not. Local 65 and over with 43,000 for a single person. 51.4 if they're married. Um, <clears throat> and then he references a lien on the property plus 3% interest. Right. Oh. That's what I had discussed. I read through the programs last week mm -hmm. or in mm -hmm. last week, yep. where some towns opted to do that, opted to put a lien on the property, which with in this case a 3% interest mm -hmm. rate, okay. which at the sale of the home would have to do. We'll all have to be paid. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a tax of abatement, not, a, not, not an exemption. Right. Basra, they have the state program, but no local. Uh, in Groton, they have the state program, local FC handout. I think he's referring I think to the one we already received. Oh, okay. 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 So that's when he says referring to it, it's the property relief. For older adults. So they're keeping the same. Yeah, yeah. report from January 2015. <clears throat> so that hasn't changed for Broughton. As you were kind of as you were mentioning, some of the things that you found. I was looking through and they made some changes on the town you mentioned. Got it. It was interesting to see how that yeah. changed. Had uh, the state program plus the local 65 plus resident uh, need to be there for 15 years. 55,000 or less, and they lean on the property. Mm -hmm. Lebanon state program, no local, with a question mark. So we'll have to <clears throat> get some clarification on that. All right. So on the, that handout we had, Lebanon does not offer local option property tax relief program. So I think that might be what he was also referring to in the file here. I was thinking, you know, before we go further on that, mm -hmm. is we should do maybe like a little spreadsheet with these towns that we need yeah, to well, yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's great to hear these different things, but we need to put it, put it in a format that will make some sense, right? So we can refer back to it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. 
Yeah. Well, the next meeting, I'll put together a, a spreadsheet for that, and so we can all take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but how about for time, just John, if you would give us a quick rundown of some of the things that you sure. found, and then from there, let's have I think let's just have a discussion about what we're thinking, about what we're seeing, and you know, just kind of get a sense of where we are as a group. Yeah. And then we'll take it from there. Is that okay? Yeah, that's right. John, so what, what, uh, well, for Ann, for Ann's benefit, I'm going to back up yes. a little bit into what we, I mentioned last week, just so she knows where this came from. In years past, I've been investigating alternative uh, tax structures for towns. And I'm mm -hmm. at different meetings, I've presented it back in 2018. There was a similar committee. But uh, there was a meeting, it wasn't really an official committee at the form that for this purpose. That didn't go very far. It, it had a few meetings and then uh, it was postponed, obviously, now till 2023. Mm -hmm. um, but in the doing of that, what I had presented was the situation that we have and with the tax abatement or deferrals or exemptions that the state offers, <clears throat> towns still recognize that they have a need. They have seniors, that's why we have affordable housing committees with all these other things trying to solve the problem of people not being able to live in town. Right. So I took a different approach. I searched internationally, nationally, and then also came up with some ideas of what possible alternatives are there to a property tax mill rate applied funding of a town. And what I found was that there are places that have tried what was called land-based, uh, sorry, um, yeah, land-based taxation as opposed to property tax. That was a, there was an attempt, I was told of that to had occurred in New London for a brief period of time. I still have been unable to find any documentation of how long that it was implemented and how it was applied in New London, but I don't. I worked during the day, so I haven't had a chance to get over there mm -hmm. to see if anyone even remembers when it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I had presented was the idea of the origin of taxation in a town is a fee for service. A town provides services to the residents, taxes the people, seeks revenue in order to fund what they provide for us. Mm -hmm. So if you look at taxation from that perspective, it changes the whole way that we go about making, applying the bills. A fee for service is either going to be just divided equally amongst the lots. Everybody that lives here in town receives the same services, or it could be divided into the case of residential versus commercial, which we already do. We tax at two different rates, but it's still based on the value of the assessed value of the property. The reason why that, in my opinion, is an unfair assessment is that's money that's already spent. It has nothing to do with the person's income, their ability to pay, or for the uh, type of services that they've been rendered and should be paying for. So the attachment to the mill rate is a total, in my mind, a total foreign concept to how you should pay a bill. If the if you go with a land based, then you would base you would take our um, our budget and divide it potentially equally amongst everybody in town that has a lot, or in some places it's done per head mm -hmm. by the number of residents in town, and that all I don't have the current figures, so I can't do any of this math. I had started to do this back in two thousand and eighteen. And I didn't make copies of this. I showed it to you last time. The, the breakdown of colonials versus Victorians versus vacant lots. Again, <laughs> if someone comes to provide service, there's a heart attack. Someone's in their home, mm -hmm. in the sewer front. They're hiking in the woods. There's no change in the service rendered. So why is there a different applied fee based on the value of someone's home or the value of their car. So if you take that bill and divide it equally and begin to look at all of our town budget items, line items, as a service, you would then divide that by how many people are rendered that service. So there would be a, a difference potentially between, say, 
if we instituted sewer here in town, would you charge everybody in town for the sewer when only a few people or a few homes are, you know, that wouldn't be a fair way to deal with it. But when it comes to the highway department, they plow the roads, they clear the fallen trees, they shovel the snow, that, that's equally provided. Everybody uses the roads. So that's another way of dividing up the services is based on who is actually using or receiving the service. For instance, we provide a school so that everyone in town can have a school, but then you have the bus service, which is basically a taxi service, a limousine service to bring your child to school. Not everyone has it, receives that benefit, so why is everyone paying for it? Those would be the discussions that the Board of Finance would have to present. I'm, I'm not suggesting we get bogged down. Oh, no, yeah. no, All I'm doing is yeah, presenting a different way to look at okay. taxation, uh -huh. an alternative way of dividing the bill. Uh -huh. What I had also mentioned last week was that if we divide the bill in that different format, and equalize the bill for the services rendered, then potentially you'll increase some people's taxes and lower people, other people's taxes. You can equalize the bill for the services rendered, but then you still wouldn't necessarily eliminate the problem we've been called to solve. And that is how do you make sure that people who are, are of either low income or seniors or veterans or uh, disabled, how do they pay that bill? And my suggestion was to institute through the town a, a tax fund, a trust fund, whatever terminology you want to get to it, a municipal uh, fund that as people potentially donate to it or raise money to put into it, that that then would be the government assisted housing, which would qualify as affordable housing by the state statutes. It also would allow those individuals who make those donations to take tax deductions on their income taxes because they're donating to a charitable setup that the town would set up. Uh -huh. So I don't have all the math of all of this <clears throat> together, but that, that's basically where I dropped off last week, that concept. I then went back. Yeah, these move on. Yeah, it wasn't, the wheel's not on. Um, I then went back searching through what some of the records that we still have from years back. And we had talked about the military. Uh, as far as finding out what military are potentially in need, mm -hmm. we talked about not being able to know how many senior citizens we have. Census Bureau, Registrar of Voters, we talked about ways to get that. Uh, to find out the needs of military people, veterans in need, sometimes they will not come and apply. Right? Whether for whatever reason, whether it's generational pride, those of us that were raised and never to take a dime of charity or whatever, but the state police fund is the, uh, a source of information for that. There's also now in Norwich a, uh, a veterans facility, a brand new veterans facility in the, uh, the corporate mall up there in uh, North and Norwich Town by Dodd Stadium. Hmm. There's a very large facility there that takes care of the veterans in the area. Oh, so, so, so we could refer people to the veterans and they could give information of what we were offering. We could do that yeah. and we could also seek them out to find out what veterans live right here in town yeah. that we don't yeah. know about. They maybe haven't approached us yet. Maybe because, you can reach out to them. because to walk for some of those individuals, like when the school project was mm -hmm. up, we found a man in town. I didn't personally, but one of the people helping me out on, on that struggle found a veteran who lived here in town whose cataracts were so bad it was like looking through two pinholes in cardboard. Mm -hmm. And he never came to a town meeting, he, he couldn't get out of yeah. the house at night. and. So he was one of the signers of the petition to question the school project because he couldn't afford it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there are people here in town that never make it mm -hmm. to these types of events mm -hmm. or, or things. The other suggestion was uh, through the senior center, through Teresa Pence's mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to find out mm -hmm. she would, because I know she helps people fill out their applications for state aid and things. So mm -hmm. she would have a good grasp perhaps. Of who that. Officially and unofficially. I think Teresa would probably know, right. you know, quite a bit about what 
Right. We were at the community. So uh, the other thing that I had dug up was from around the country, and he said some of these are most of these are still in place. Uh, in Colorado, there's something called Tabor, and it, had, it's, uh, it was an amendment one. It's a tax relief program. I don't have the details on these. I have, to, I have the list, but that paperwork I threw away years ago when it got, we got canceled. Uh, in Oregon, it was called Measure 5, and it was a property tax cap. In California, I don't know if any of you remember Proposition 13. Yep. Uh, there are some programs in Maine and New Hampshire, but I don't know the names of those programs. And in New York, it's called the STAR program. And then there's also the Enhanced STAR program. And I don't have all of that stuff. You know, I, I could get the star because um, I have family that lives in New York, and my mother, when she was alive, participated in the star program. Okay. So I can try to find that out. That'd be great. Okay. And they, they may or may not be similar to what we have, but I know uh, some of them do have the tax freeze after a certain age of, at least of the school tax. And that was something else that we had talked about briefly. That at what point have you paid enough to be vested in the town? Is it a quarter of a million? Is it a half a million? What, at what point, if you're a lifelong resident of town, how long have you been paying? And at what point can you be on the receiving end as opposed to continuing to pay the serve owners? So that's a gist of my take on what we're up to is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. The uh, terminology that I found used for a lot of these programs around the country, uh, again, I made reference to fee for service. Uh, in some parts of the country, they refer to the government in revenue stream as service charges. Mm -hmm. uh, some are called user fees. Some are simply called the municipal services cost. And then another term I found was called the parcel expense, which is similar to lot. Lot uh -huh. cost, yeah. Okay. So some of those fees for the services rendered are across the board, everybody gets them. Some of them are more like a user fee, where, like I said, the school bus is a some people use it, some people don't. And I did find did Bill be, that, that's a good example because uh, with the school bus, I'm not sure if it's here, but in some towns you're required to take the bus as opposed to option. Really? So, you know, I didn't know that. You know, you, they, they don't want anybody walking to the school. And because I think it's, it's going to be long. Westerly, it's like that, and there are people that get on the bus when they go about 100 feet and they get off the bus. <laughs> wow! So it's the, that kind of a situation where, um, and, and even if it is then required by whatever statute, it's still, still a, it's still a service sir. provided to a limited section of the population. So that would be under the term user fee as opposed to service charge, and then. It, I found this. It's the they used to put this in the paper all the yeah. time. No, Wesley Sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I remember that. And it clearly states the services provided by North Stonington: gas, sewer, water provided to portions, uh, resident state troopers, volunteer fire department, volunteer ambulance, trash and garbage was privately contracted, and the library. But yet the these are referred to as services, mm. but not the schools. It doesn't have the school on there. It, it, well, schools, they list separately, just as a list. But there's an example mm. of the concept mm. of these are services provided. Mm -hmm. So sure. that mm. the payment for those services, if you ha I, have, I personally don't have the time to go to the, um, the landfill. So I pay mm -hmm. to have my mm -hmm. trash removed. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for the service. but. Mm -hmm. If that mindset was instituted for every line item in our budget, it would change the way people think about taxation. All right. Well, 
Oh, I was going to say, the only, I did not hear back from my contact at the registrar, and then I just thought about it as we're here. He has such a plethora of emails that he probably doesn't even see mine. I'm going to call him. He's sure. a registrar, and they have a, um, he has a system that has all, he can connect to any of our towns, and it's got a widget, and the widget, I think, is a filter, so he could filter. I don't know if he can filter by birth date. I was thinking by mm -hmm. birth year, you know, mm -hmm. so I'll call him, because I have a feeling he's not seen like because it was up against yeah it's so many okay. yeah so i will okay. i'll okay. um so then okay. if we were implementing some of this this would be something that we the town would implement that wouldn't really have anything to do with the state program or any other services that would be no this would no be... uh it wouldn't it wouldn't and that was something else that i had referenced was this circuit breaker program mm -hmm. that uh the seniors that mm -hmm. apply and qualify can get the, between a thousand and twelve hundred, mm -hmm. and the state reimburses the town. Right. So, if we were to equalize taxation, and more seniors wound up with higher taxes, they could all apply for that, mm -hmm. and the state would actually reimburse us That's in greater nice. number than they do yeah. now. That's what I was thinking. That if mm -hmm. we have, if the state is reimbursing for some of the programs, that would be a really beneficial. And mm -hmm. now, as I understand it, the way that the state reimburses is that. The towns ask for a block of money, mm -hmm. all the towns, want. Mm -hmm. and then the state just allocates X number of dollars, and you get that your percentage based on that dollar amount. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's <laughs> I don't think it's like there's more money to get from the state because the state's going to cap what we get. Right. But I the, think I think correct that that is a possibility. Yep. <laughs> There also is one of the criteria for the allocation of funds at the state level. Do they apply? Do they care more about the need of seniors as opposed to something else that if there were more seniors, we would get more money? We don't know that. I don't know. We don't know what yeah, their criteria is for the allocation of the funds they right. have available. True. So that's something that, that would be something to ask uh, our representatives to find out how that how that works. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. And if you, if you could put that together as you make some yes, more fine, you get, get some more work that you're going to do there, and let me know. Get that to me in the form of a word doc. Sure. You, uh, well, I don't have I don't have word, but I can write something up. Write something up. Yeah, I'll put that in. Uh, in order to then take this and determine assessment, mm -hmm. I am going to need to get those numbers from Daryl as soon as he has the residential versus commercial lots. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know it, this is a busy time of year for him, but as soon as we know what those numbers are and as soon as we can find out the number of seniors, yeah. then the math of this can be determined and we can figure out if this is easily applicable or if it's something that's going to take I just had a thought too. I'm sorry. Can you sure. I, can I can run a list of residents. It would actually just be voters. So it's going to, it's going to, that's what we want. And I can, I can access their date of birth. And I'm, if I can sort it by, you know, a year, you know, from this to this, maybe I can do that. And I would have to, you know, it's just be between us, you know, highlight or not. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, there's, 4,000, around 4,100 voters in our town. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a lot of pages. However, mm -hmm. if I can filter it, I'll try. And like I said, maybe this Matt Wagner could do the same for okay. me. Yeah. You know? and they, and I'll have to look at it. And I know? also mentioned, it just popped into my head, we, the, the census was just taken. Mm -hmm. So there should be somewhere at some yeah. level. I'm not sure when that's available. Mm -hmm. I, I think it takes a while, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But Daryl, I'm sure Daryl can let us know as far as because he utilizes census information, I'm sure. Um, I'm not, when I met with Daryl, I got the sense that he's not going to have all the fine numbers done until like late February. Okay. So that won't help so, us. Because so should I endeavor to put this together based on the 2018 numbers I had? Or last year? I don't know that. last year. Daryl will go. Okay. He might not have the current numbers. Okay. Daryl? If we use. Uh, Abu? Uh, 
Oh, hi, Tim. It's Connie. We're so, doing the meeting. Um, just making sure we're not getting wrong. So <laughs> yeah, okay. It's easy for me to get that. Okay, yeah, right. If I can get wrong, if I had the last year, <laughs> that would be a close approximation. It's close enough for what we're going to do. Okay. The building inspector. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to give you what I get. Mm -hmm. And the top page of this is what Daryl is the backup to the plan, and it has the descriptive on it in the in the back of it too as to what we're doing. You know, because all he gave us was a letter with we all got a copy of that letter. Right. But this is um, actually from the state, and it does is with the guideline that we got. So I'm going to give you everything that I had, and that way, if you're doing the spreadsheet, then. There you oh, go. Oh, and if you have any questions for me, you know my number. All right. So good information. At this point, I'd like to get a sense from the committee members. What would you like to try and accomplish? For, for you know, just what what do you think would be something that would be say, I'm glad the town's doing this for seniors for the disabled. Because we know we got a state program. Mm -hmm. What else would we want to do? Yeah. Okay, I have some thoughts on this. Having worked in this business years ago as a social worker, I have to do a lot of this with the seniors. And I just I read I just perused this and I was thinking, you know, there's some programs that you know, we get reimbursed, which are good because that certainly brings money into the office and we don't have to take it out. So that's good. I think that the program sounds interesting. That's something we might be able to think about at, at, at some point in time. I think it might take a while for people to understand it and use it. The other thing is that I think we do have some solutions that we haven't really well, we look at them, but not. I, I think affordable housing would be another benefit because then the problem is solved. We don't have to worry about people, you know, needing tax benefits because they mm -hmm. have affordable housing. And they, that yeah. affordable housing would go, you know, the next person would be affordable for the next person. I mean, Ann Renahan did a whole program, a whole beautiful on the too. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was, I'm thinking that. Two, you know, developers can come in here and decide that they want to develop property. And, mm -hmm. you know, this way we have say. Yeah. We have people in this town that are interested in the you know, affordable housing meeting tonight. People are already interested in doing something about this. And what better way for us to do it ourselves and have somebody else come in and do it that way? We know what we have, mm -hmm. you know, maybe offering some other services for other, you know, kids, kids in the town. Maybe a, a rec center could be tied to that. I mean, mm -hmm. I see. As, an as, a, as a developer, you have to contribute right. to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. not uncommon. Yeah. Many, no, it isn't. Yeah. At all. But and I think that you're you're just you're helping everybody. And you know, grandma or grandpa wants to stay in town, or the kids want to stay in town. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have that opportunity. It doesn't necessarily that affordable housing doesn't necessarily have to be just for the seniors. I think mixed is much nicer. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Okay. And so that's kind of what. I worked with Ann on that project, Meadow Court, and mm -hmm. uh, I still have a lot of that paperwork. Yeah, it was a really good, it was a really good project. Oh. I put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, and exactly. I always was impressed with it. I thought it would be a nice for this mm -hmm. town, and then with it, then we're not going to be constantly worried about the state coming and say, hey, you need to meet a certain percentage for the yeah. housing, and we can meet the needs of the people in town. So yeah. it's a win-win. Win Thank you. Um, I guess one of my thoughts was that the uh, the income that is listed on the state program, I think, is kind of ludicrous um, for a married couple. You know, just you know, to say they're making forty nine thousand one hundred dollars, they get ten percent off. You know, or two hundred fifty dollars. It's not helping. It really isn't money. You know, it's. It doesn't make a dent. It doesn't make any dent. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe as a committee, we could look at these guidelines and maybe we can take our own thresholds and maybe mm -hmm. we can increase some of those thresholds. Um, and to see what, if we could find out again, either through um, the tax collector 
what are some of the people's challenges that are seniors that can't pay their bills, you know, or and what is their threshold, what is their income threshold that they're working with. Um, I, I think these are just absolutely ridiculously low. I mean, no one can live on that. You know, for the, I mean, who could live on $50,000 no, no. and own a home and have to live yeah. But if we're talking seniors, seniors. Well, let's just say seniors, you know, they, you know, with the taxes, electricity, insurance, mm -hmm. etc. Hopefully by that time, mortgage is at least very small. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then again, you know, if they moved here, they maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's no... And, and two, they get to the point where it's like, I can't take care of this property anymore. Right. Exactly. I would like to stay in town because my friends are here. Right. right. And my family is here. So. I just do that. Right. 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 You know, um, one of the ways we can look at the, the income mm -hmm. is, you know, in North Stonington, our average income is above our, 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 medium. Our, our household income is above average in this, in this community. So maybe our assistance should be above that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's out as a justification. And then, you know, if we look at it, and I'm not sure if the STAR program in New York is just on um, on the education side of it, I'll, I'll check um, and what the percentage of their discount is and their STAR program could be similar to this. But when maybe we look at those seniors and then don't, maybe we look at the taxable, the, the, and the portion of the tax that is education, that is the school. You know, what mm -hmm. we could find out, and maybe we could do a either a flat rate off or uh, a percentage off because I don't have children, you know, no. I can afford what I've got, but there's a lot of people who don't have that children, they don't right. get that service, and we only have minimal services in this town. And they're paying, I think you said 75% of their budget is the school, is the school, you know, that's pretty much universal, is it? Yeah, yeah. it's in a 70 to 80 range. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you, yeah, it's, that's, our budget is twenty-one thousand dollars, and the town runs on six. The rest is the school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of which the finance board doesn't have any direct oversight. No, no, that's that's a whole other issue. That's a whole other issue. <coughs> yeah. We don't so, want to go there. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> that's a, Betty, I'm sorry. No, Betty, uh, any Hi. comments? Yeah, I'm looking at what uh, Connie is saying too about looking at increasing those income levels. I think that uh, bears looking at. We can increase those perhaps. Um, I did see in here that Old Line actually does or, uh, offer an affordable uh, housing deed restriction for those people a break in, in their taxes. So it's not unique. It, it, that's the only town I did see that, but you know it can happen. Um, the only thing about the schools. Um, I understand it's a service you don't take advantage of if you don't have kids in the school system. However, there is an idea of the social contract that we as a society have an obligation to educate those generations coming after us. And we all here are the beneficiaries, perhaps I'm speaking for all of us, of a public education where somewhere at some point in time, someone who didn't have kids in school paid for our public education. So um maybe there's going to be an easing on that but i don't think you can back you know we have an obligation as a society who yeah. else is going to generate the you know gross <clears throat> national product who's going to be our firefighters who's going to be our policemen who's going to be our teachers we need to educate the coming generations so even though you directly at this point in your time don't direct a benefit from it it's it's part of your being a, a member of a dem democratic society education is the backbone of a democracy so there's an obligation there, whether you get a direct benefit, you get a benefit as being a, a member of this society. That's just my soapbox on that. Um, the flip side of that, I think there's a need to look at spending that's done in our schools. And I don't just mean <coughs> North Stonington in particular, but in all school systems, there seems to me there's quite a bit of waste. Um, and I think that's where, I mean, there's things you cannot uh, reduce, like salaries and uh, benefits. But in terms of programs that have gone into, do they, in fact, provide the benefit that we hope they would? Um, that's where I would look to. But that's a whole other issue from us. But in terms mm -hmm. of taxation, I think, as you say, with every town, that's the bulk of your, your budget. 
And I think you're going to have to bear that just as somebody did for you when you came through the system. So um, perhaps there's a, a small amount off. It doesn't have to be, you know, if they're paying 75%, maybe there's a certain right. flat rate or something that wouldn't, you know, yeah, kill the town. Uh, I know every time I go up <laughs> some subject really gets to turn to the school and then the whole idea gets trashed because of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I specifically made reference to meals, school bus, mm -hmm. not the school itself. Uh, again, if you take the tax bill and divide it equally among the lots, then it changes the amount of money that you would be paying. For instance, a senior paying 75% of their taxes on the school, as opposed to, well, if you pull all these things out that are services and fees, mm -hmm. and then you still have left the things that potentially you want to, you could still take only a portion of that off and mill rate just for certain items, and the mill rate would drastically go down because it's only for those items. There's a lot of different ways to do the math on breaking down this bill, without cutting out services without uh, heavily taxing one person over another. In any of these systems that happen statewide, nationwide, municipalities, the, the Board of Finance is always gonna look for, well, if we're gonna discount this person, where are we gonna get the rest of the money? Right. Well, that is the that's one. Thing. Yeah, that, that's, that, the that's why nothing ever gets changed. Yeah. And, and that's why we're still where we are. This is, you know, 2018, we were talking about this, and that wasn't the first time it was discussed either. These low uh, reimbursement or dis uh, um, what's the word? Exemptions or, or discounts on taxes are so low because we don't have or have not found a way to come up with the revenue to keep going. Mm -hmm. So that's why. <laughs> alternative ways. There are a lot of them. Uh, Norwich has a utility. Broughton has a utility. One of the things that North Stonington has as a great resource, and Ann Renahan and I talked about it years ago, was we have this extremely clean aquifer underneath North Stonington mm -hmm. that Years ago, the state began doing meetings. They, if there was ever a crisis, they claimed they, they were making plans to tap into and take the water from underneath North Stonington. Mm -hmm. Well, if Anne had proposed long ago that we cap our well and use it as a resource to sell as a revenue for the town to sell clean, mm -hmm. the cleanest water in the state. Mm -hmm. Those are limited, items that, limited yeah, it's those are those are items that are, and now we're getting quite beyond the scope of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But those are ways to reduce taxes for everyone. True. It's mm -hmm. again, it's you if you're mm -hmm. only gonna look at patchwork on the wound, <laughs> we'll just but those are things we can consider. But um, we can, I guess what I'm looking for now is is more. So a general sense about where we can go because given yeah. that we, whatever we lower one group's tax, another group's going to make up for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, it, it would seem that um, to come up with something that's going to work for now, that's going to benefit the most people and also bring us in some, and then make mm -hmm. a recommendation that we'd like to see these other things look at in the future, and maybe a committee should be made to do that. As so along that point. The general sense of the committee, mm -hmm. do we want to give more money to the individuals that have less income? So we'll give, a, you know, we're, we're going to have a cap. Let's just pretend we come up with the numbers. Mm -hmm. Somebody making less than $70,000 uh, will we'll qualify for the program. But should we skew it or progress it so it's the, the individuals that are down in the thirty-five thousand dollars a year range get a substantially greater percentage than the ones that are at seven? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. substantially. So if we've yeah. got a yeah. pool of money, if we've got fifty thousand dollars pulling out of the air, yeah. then we're going to be able to help people. The ones that are really at the lower end, 
should get the vast majority of that. Um, question back up. We're all in agreement that it should be a needs-based thing. Uh -huh. Is yes. that true? Yes. yes. Because yes. there are individuals that God bless them. They don't need it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it goes. Um, so how, does that seem? I I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I absolutely, absolutely. agree. Um, yeah, we can't go in with anything dramatic that'll just shut us down completely. Right. But to your point, John, these are things that to go to economic development. You know, again, talking about that water, we need somebody to come in and right. to take on that project and build a infrastructure. I'm concerned with natural, national, natural resources. <laughs> I just, you know, when I see the things that are going on into this stage world, I say, we got them, we're really lucky. Oh, yeah. so let's just, you know, we are blessed and mm -hmm. we're a bad natural resource. Oh, it's true. Yeah, you know, we really are. And I, I didn't know that my father in law used to be the president of the Cedar Ridge. Water company, and that aquifer was 20 feet below the surface over there. Mm -hmm. Unlimited water, 20 feet. That's that's the closest. Wow. I had, I did see another <clears throat> way that we maybe could do something, and that's do we have in our science in any 55 plus housing developments? Um, well, not no. development per no, se. No, no. You have, uh, no. What, no, you, you know, have, uh, yeah. Ron <laughs> Lewis that has some affordable housing, uh, but not affordable housing, not age restricted. No, no, no. age restricted. No. no, there were multiple no. attempts to no. bring that to town. have <laughs> always been shut down <coughs> just to do it, just to just to have a 55 plus community. Mm -hmm. Why would that help? Well, not affordable housing. Well, that's not affordable. Well, they that's work it, but they they uh, they it's, they it's, receive it. My husband works well, in the community. Yeah. So, yeah. In Beacon Point Hills in West Hollywood, the, the the fifty five plus community, the starting house is seven hundred thousand dollars. It's not affordable housing. That's true. Yeah. It's not affordable. In fact, it tends to be the other way. And I'm just thinking if that would be a way, if somebody were to come into town, do that, they they look at the additional things that they can do for the town. Mm -hmm. But those houses, because if they're 55 plus, two bedroom, no kids, mm -hmm. they could get a 20 year tax break. Mm -hmm. And they're not and we get so much of a burden on the town. No, what's <laughs> no, your point? What, what services are they going to get <coughs> that you could justify? For new development and all new taxes, that kind of break. Because now that's new money. Yeah. So, well, you know, I think, you know, it's again, you're going back to, and I don't want to just economic development to get people in here to look at that type of a development, you know, uh, bring some other business and services in. And the problem, part of the problem in the town is we don't have a water company, we don't have a sewer, you know, and so those people have to bear. Some of the burden on develop, you know, building. Though we could, oh, though we could offer them some kind of a basement on the or we could yeah, do absolutely. something to absolutely, yeah. 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 yeah, because it's not so bad not having all these sewers and waters and every, everything else, because that's costly and that can cause problems too. Sure, you know. The the, the way the system is, the financial system is currently set up in America, it leads to urbanization because everybody's. Tax base. <laughs> so you want to bring something in, build this. Yes. And it never works. And it never works. And then you expand the demand for services and then yeah. you build more and mm -hmm. take away what you have. So so that's the pattern. Right. And then you look at a you look at a town like Waterford, and Waterford's got substantial <laughs> development, nuclear power plant, everything else that it wants. And all the retail, their tax base is the taxes are yes. low and it's uh, they're, they're but they have a nuclear power plant. <laughs> right, that pays for a whole lot. Yeah. So there's no question about that. So you know, depends on how it's yeah. um okay. So Any? a question for you, you jumped uh, something about the we seem to be in agreement about the fact that the biggest break should go to the neediest. Can yes. we find out who earns what? What what number of people earn below a certain amount? And we'd have to set that amount. 
Can we, is that information available? Well, what we could do is base it on <coughs> the median income for the town as just as an example. Okay. So and if somebody's getting the median income, they probably shouldn't qualify mm -hmm. for tax assistance. Right. Okay. So if you're 75% of the median income in the town, that would be the threshold. Just say. Okay. And then using this from zero to 20,000. Know, isn't that the same criteria for affordable housing? The income on income. Isn't it? <clears throat> to qualify to qualify. Yeah. For, yeah uh, well, I, I, my mind is going blank on the percentage, but it, it's a percentage of the average income. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Uh, to, to qualify to be a buyer. Yes. To be right. affordable. Yeah. So <laughs> you're talking about the same criteria. It's just a question of is it the same percentage? Mm. Well, in the case of affordable housing, I think. If you're at seventy-five percent minus a dollar, you can buy the house. There's no additional benefit. The lower down that scale you go, mm -hmm. you just qualify to be able to buy it. Right? Mm -hmm. Here, what I'm suggesting is that we we do this as it's done here. We're <coughs> getting scale it lower <coughs> as they go down, really, really down. And it, then the, the question that goes with that is how much more? Because what we're going to get from the state is fixed. How much more do you think is reasonable and acceptable to the town to, to fund this program? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, we won't be getting any reverse reimbursement from that. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a question to the Board of Finance to give us some guidelines? That would be, a, <laughs> I can talk to Sarah about that. Don't you think? Yeah, I agree. The other thing that I also liked in some of these other towns was that you had to live in the town for a certain period of time. Yes, yes. I like that. Yeah. Glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. that right. I think that's how we can also <clears throat> for them to qualify for the additional income. income. And I think that's the step program on that sound. Um, and which help, which would get to the point about people that were here uh -huh. and paid, you know, their kids went to the school, so they got a benefit. Right. But now they've stayed here. Right. And it's no longer that benefit. Right. Yeah. You know, the um like Lisbon put out this nice little threefold pamphlet for um property tax relief for veterans, seniors, and disabled persons. It's the only town I saw that had something like this. Uh, London told me. This information is not available to the public. I mean, I got those kinds of answers too when I called. Um, oh, that's <laughs> I just you know, didn't no. even consider that a you know, legitimate answer. But um, the point is, we're trying to figure out who in town would qualify for this. I think hand in hand in this, there's a need for education. We need to, you know, something like this pamphlet or whatever, or in the quarterly. Because um, these programs, from what I understand, they're not automatic. You must make application, and there's yes. deadlines yeah. on all of these. Right. So mm -hmm. I think John is making the point that just because we have, you know, 2,500 people that qualify, there may only be, you know, 1,800 that actually make application in time and get it. And that's an ongoing thing every year. That number is going to fluctuate. You can't assume. A maximum number because you just want to have people to apply just to get their their way their whatever, right. and um, so that affects the number of people drawing on the on the uh, figure. Um, so I think there's a, it behooves the town then to educate and disseminate this kind of information as best you can, especially you know that poor gentleman who couldn't see. I mean, we need to do a little outreach there. I think that behooves the town to do that. If we're going to provide relief, we really should try to make it as possible for people to get it as, as they can. The senior center, is that a direct under the town? They get it is certain they get a certain amount of money. Okay, so yeah. it is the town senior center. Right. It is. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Teresa, Teresa, now as part of your job, we you, you need to have an outreach program for senior citizens to at least make them aware of the program. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Something That's like excellent. that. Yeah. I'm just you know, an advocate for this. Absolutely. Because I written. wonder what Daryl does with this. You know, they, they either have to reapply. Uh, how do they okay. get these people? If every year, he did tell me that every, yeah. they've got to apply every year. They may right. give you the information. They're on the system as qualifying, but they must give him information every year to stay on the program. Right. right. So, but how did he know from the onset? Who they bought, you know, how they got this information. That's, oh, you know, they, and is, you know, like one of the towns, and they say if we knew how many of the people were seniors in our town, you know, out of the 5,100 people in our town, mm -hmm. how many are, what, how many people are there? Can we target a mailing, you know, or could they send something out to these people? Oh, I, I agree. You know? But there might be a little bit of, <laughs> we don't want to, what Betty said, right. we, we might not want to do that because all of a sudden, we're only going to get 26,000 or whatever the number is from the state. Now, if all of a sudden the number of people that come in here and qualify are twice as many, yeah. we just, and, and they qualify under the existing program, right. it's money out of the town. That's why it would be good to see a whole spreadsheet on what programs we're offering to people now, what they're getting, what the potential is for other people to get on the program. So we yeah. have a bottom line. Right. right now, we're just kind of we're kind of going to guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. unfortunately, However much effort we make on that, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. It'll still be a bit of a guess because there's no way for us to right, know right. what yeah. seniors qualify and what wouldn't. And so, what they're, you know, I mean, there could be seniors who have a hefty bank account, you know. Or, hefty, or their houses are worth a lot more or a little bit. <coughs> yeah. So it's going to be hopefully an educated guess. So I think we have to find out from the tax collector who is having that challenge with paying their bill because they can't afford it. You know, so to speak. And I think we were told by Bob that we could, you know, either meet with Daryl or with Zane. I did. And I, I did talk to her about that. And they don't, even for people that just need to help, yeah. seniors or otherwise, right, right. because she has no formal program to sure. offer. Sure. It's just come in, we'll talk about it and see what we can put together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, not that there shouldn't be. No, I know. I just wonder how to work. Yeah. You know, how you collect this data, you know. And it might be something where the town, something is either the town offers without charging an incredible amount of money, interest charge, a, a monthly payment plan. Mm -hmm. If you qualify, you know, if you're in this category, mm -hmm. why do you have to make two big payments? Right, right. right. Wouldn't it be helpful if yeah. you could just say, look, we'll just break it up over 12 months? Yeah. They don't even have a credit card option to pay anything. No? No. It's even at the tax clerk, they don't have a credit card option. It's either come in with cash or check. Because yeah. there's a percentage that, 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 that you would pay as the credit card holder, you know? Oh, yeah. And then the other person has the interest rate on No, wait a minute. I think that changed. Oh, no, there is a second. I just paid my bill last week. They add, they, see, they do take. Yeah, there's a percentage because the town gets charged by the credit card company. So they add the yeah, fee charge. Oh, to, oh they, they add just, the fee just bill. Oh, oh. The bill, yeah. yeah. So, they yeah. <laughs> so, they, so if you use your credit card, you have to pay, you have to pay whatever the fee is, yeah. you get it for that. Yeah. Got it. Well, okay, I, I can uh, start to put together. The, uh, the spreadsheet that shows things. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> so you've got, so Betty, you're the, you would just need to give your information to Lou so that he can put it in the spreadsheet. Right. And I'll give you that information on those DERGs to our cohorts. Great. Cohorts, cohorts. Okay, so uh, Lou, there's, uh, so I could drop it in the mailbox in town hall? Sure. Okay, and I'll just text you that it, when it's sitting there. Thank you. You can pick it up. Okay. So for tonight, anything else? Nope. Get back here next week. Yeah. I'll have that. And we can. And that's going to be the beginning. That. Absolutely. That's going to be the beginning of the whole report. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. What's the next board of finance? We'd have to look at the calendar. Are they once a month? We don't have this one. Are they because of budget? Because of budget. 
You don't know. Yeah. And I guess we have to about the census. If we were, who comes up and who, who comes up like in the state to say what our median, median income is for the town? I'm sorry, say that again? Who is it that could come up and who do you, who's the resource that you would get? What is the medium income for North Stonington? Betty, do you know because of, we've used that on affordable housing or? The affordable housing, yeah. I mean, it's a state agency. I don't know exactly who does that. Probably the state uh, income state tax. Agency, so, yeah. Actually, services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could find out what that is. You want it? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No, and the other thing I'm thinking too is I could print, a, I could find a list of how many seniors are. I mean, my colleague can, but we won't know what they make. Right. So it does, it's, it's almost, it's a guess. It's really not. It's going to be a guess. Yeah. Well, well they did. And then that begs the question you know, if you're, is there anything the town should do for individuals that are not 65? That have disabled you know, or something? Disabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Or just they're having a hard time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's more of a one off kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And you know, when it comes to, Try to come up with that number. It is a guess. So what we can do is put it in a range from here's how many people currently take advantage of the right. program there is. Here's the potential of every senior right. qualified. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. it's the only way we would. Yeah, until we have more data, we yeah. can't fine tune yeah. that number any right. But here, this would be the minimum impact. Here's the maximum impact. Right, and we're looking at we're at 65 and older. Yep. Yeah. So if, if we could, we would at least know the universe, the population. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. That's right. That's right. Sounds good. Okay. So our next meeting on the seventh, or is that it's 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 all, it's all the meetings on Monday? Okay. Yep. Right. And I and I file the right paperwork. The town clerk. Yahoo. <laughs> so we're, we're legal. <laughs> and she gets a copy of the minutes. You gave her yeah. copy. Yeah. So if you send me a copy of the minutes, <coughs> and I will provide them to her with the new agenda. Okay. And then after the agenda for next week, it'll be review of what we put the I put together from this. Yes. Yeah. And whatever other information, John, you're going to continue to work. to continue to work on this. I'll try to try to make a trip in to get a copy of last year's All right okay good information good. okay and we'll see what we can do any else betty are you no good i'll get that information to you okay good 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 are we good Motion to adjourn. well wait we got one more public comment oh. okay i think we can <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, Thank Betty. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Betty. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>